It starts with two people in love. It always does. That fabricated version of teenage love you think no force can destroy. That cinematic portrayal of attraction and romance, cynics call an illusion, rom-coms consider a reality. Those violins playing in the background and that ridiculously well-aimed breeze brushing against your cheeks. Endless conversations, glances, touches, bare temptations, gifts, letters, those simple jubilations. And if those cliché fairy tale moments go on for long enough, you they, they make you think that you can do it. You can break the stigma surrounding it and yes, you can do it. After all, she said, if our love is so strong, what's a little distance, right? At first you make a lot of promises, tell each other you're different from the rest, the infamous exception. For a month or two, the long winding conversations feel foreign and thrilling. A chance to get to know one another on a more intimate level. And then slowly, so slowly that you might not even notice, well, she certainly didn't. Conversations are replaced by missed calls and resentful, unread texts. The day finally comes when she admits that they want, in fact, the exception. The college trips with new friends made her miss him a little less. It wasn't him, it was the situation. The new special friend she made could encourage her better than a boyfriend 4,000 miles away from her home. It wasn't him, it was the situation. When fights had become a routine and I love yous had faded among the tears, it wasn't him she wanted to break, it was the situation. It wasn't his fault, it wasn't hers. She didn't give up on him, she just couldn't settle for the situation. Then came the expectations versus reality phase. I'm sure everyone who's ever broken up knows what I'm talking about. Uh, December arrived. A car ride filled with giddy excitement versus a car ride filled with queer uneasiness. Shrieks of happiness after months of separation versus one awkward hug after a half-hearted smile. Deep, unending kisses versus. So, how have you been? Woo! The array of grammatical errors weren't cute anymore. That other fucking bitch didn't make her jealous anymore. She didn't want to WhatsApp him her itinerary of the day anymore. Admiration had turned to exasperation. Her love had turned platonic. But after the discomfort she had to admit, she felt a little liberated. This fleeting feeling of freedom resulted in something she thought was just a fleeting attraction. But among the law school moments of the rules of debate and the Indian penal code sections, she realized that she was feeling something that no rule, code or law could define. She was feeling it again. But wait, was she thinking too much? Was she moving on too fast? Even through the seeds of denial rooted in her head, those, she could still hear those silent heartbeats whispering to her. She wasn't sad, she wasn't broken. He didn't save her or poetically help fix her. Instead, he just made her fly when she didn't even know she possessed the wings. Endless conversations, glances, touches, their temptations, gifts, letters, those simple jubilations. She thought she wouldn't have that again for a long time. She thought she'd turn into one of those self-sufficient girls who said, who needs a boy, huh? But his dorky intelligence, his deep compassion changed that. When he looked at her in that adorable way and called her his Patronus, she could swear she felt that cinematic breeze all over again and said, yeah, I do need this boy. It starts with two people in love, right? Well, it can start again too. I just hope that the boy 4,000 miles away knows that too.